Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benu. You're watching Israeli News Live. Been a busy day for us here today. Starting off by releasing a message on the Noon Institute uh, about Jeremiah chapter 10. And in fact, because of the revelation I've gotten from Jeremiah chapter 10 there, uh, tonight is not really the best night for me to bring it out on Israeli News Live, but we do need to get into the Gog of Magog, the king of the north, because Jeremiah chapter 10 verse 22 really identifies who this king of the north really is, or at least it helps pinpoint more his location. Uh, before we get into this, let me real quick though, uh, just kind of speak a couple of things here. Trump's national security advisor just said that the U.S. is ready to take North Korea's nukes by force. Uh, that's been coming out. I want to thank uh, Sister Rosa for giving me some of this information and I kind of did a little bit of checking myself to see what's going on. A lot of talk about North Korea right now. We know that President uh, Putin is trying to get President Trump not to go against North Korea. Uh, there has been other uh, news uh, feeds out there, like in the case of Fox News, North Korea begins testing mounting anthrax and ICBMs, according to a report that they're saying. Now, they're actually talking about that uh, Russia is increased a tremendous amount of trade with North Korea, in so much that the oil prices are dropping in North Korea and a lot of accusation against Russia for joining in uh, doing commerce with North Korea. But then again, you got to understand, can you really blame Russia? I mean, Russia's under the same type of sanctions as North Korea. You know, NATO and their allies hate Russia so bad. They've isolated Russia. So Russia's going to trade with whomever uh, is an enemy of uh, NATO or an enemy of the U.S., etc. Although Russia doesn't want it to be that way. Uh, but it kind of has forced Russia's hand. Uh, China, not so much the same for them. They have that ability to be able to uh, trade with the rest of the world and have not had sanctions levied against them as Russia has. I, I know there has been some sanctions placed on China, but not like in the case of North Korea uh, or Russia, that is. Uh, kind of jumping back, though, this idea of North Korea beginning testing mounting anthrax, uh, I kind of question that because on Sputnik News, Pyongyang denies biochemical weapons development charges. Uh, that has been levied against them based on Fox News. And the reason why I kind of tend to believe in this case here that North Korea is being more truthful about it is because Kim Jong-un seems like the kind of guy that he doesn't really care what the rest of the world thinks. And if he was developing chemical weapons to uh, attach to his IB ICBMs, I think he would be very bold about stating the fact and be using it as yet another threat against the United States. Uh, after all, nuclear weapons are far more deadly than the chemical weapons or the biohazards. I realize biohazards uh, are far more nasty type of weapon, but when it comes to the nuclear weapons, it's going to kill a lot more more people. Uh, and he's not been afraid to let the world know that he has them, that he uses them, and that he intends to use them uh, if he doesn't get his way. So I do question whether or not that is really true in that regards there. Uh, also here on over, uh, Zero Hedge there, America is preparing bloody nose military attack on North Korea, according to the Telegraph. Uh, Tyler Durden bringing out this article here, while North Korea managed to once again drop off the list of immediate geopolitical concerns have kept a re relative quiet in recent weeks without any noticeable provocations or ICBM launches. Uh, this may be changing soon because according to the Telegraph, America is drawing up plans for a bloody nose military attack on North Korea to stop its nuclear weapons program. Uh, so a lot of information out there right now that it looks like North Korea is about to come to a head. I'm going to be sharing you with you guys here, though, very soon that North Korea is actually has been on the target of a global plan all the way back before Iraq was on that plan for being part of those nations that would be taken out in modern days. Don't have the time to go into it today. I did want to just roughly mention something though to you. Daniel 11, we speak about the King of the North very often, uh, as in the case here, in the end of the years they shall join themselves together and the daughter of the King of the South shall come to the King of the North to make an agreement, but she shall not retain the strength of the arm. Neither shall he stand nor his arm, but he shall be given up and they that brought her and he that begot her and he that obtained her in those times. Now notice, obtained her. 
I uh, thought that was very interesting because Jeremiah chapter 10 is where we really find out about who the king of the north is, or at least get a better idea. Because when you get down to the end of Jeremiah chapter 10, and no, it has nothing to do with Christmas trees as some people think. If you actually look at the beginning of there when it talks about they take the tree out of the woods, they fasten it with nails and uh, they mold it, shape it is basically what it's speaking about there. This is more to do with the Vatican's crucifix and it becoming an idol, uh, something that is used as worship. Uh, and in fact, it is very clear that the Vatican does take, they make the crosses, the crucifix, put Jesus on it, or at least an, a, a similitude of what they consider his image to be, and they fasten it with nails, deck it with gold and silver. That's also the case as well. And it is even in Wikipedia speaks about how the, the Catholic Church uses this for people to go and pray before. Uh, the whole chapter is about idolatry, but when you get down to verse 22, because the whole warning is to the house of Israel to start with, and why the house of Israel? Because house of Israel was already dispersed amongst the nations, and once Rome was actually formed in, uh, as far as the Vatican in 325 AD, and this religion spread, the house of Israel was very much involved as a part of that. And so God was warning the house of Israel through his prophet Jeremiah not to get involved with this idolatry form of worship because there's no breath of life in these statues. They're just lined up, lined up as it says in the scriptures, like cucumbers, right? But here's what gets interesting. When you get down to verse 22, it says, Hark a report, behold, it cometh a great commotion out of the north country to make the cities of Judah desolate a dwelling place of jackals or dragons. Uh, another way to translate that word or sea serpents there, but that's actually the, what it is, the tanim. Tanim is a, like a dragon. Uh, I find this interesting because of the verbiage that is used, and it does say me'eretz tsephon. It is from the land of the north or the land of the hidden. Remember what I said about the melech tsephon? The hidden king, the king of the north, as we read about over in the book of Daniel chapter 11. Well, even though technically Rome is northwest of Israel, according to scripture, it is north. I find that rather interesting. So when we begin to think about the north country or even the Gog of Magog and thinking about who this man really is, this hidden king, this king of the north, as well as those that will come against Israel, that will bring this huge army with all of their bucklers and swords and everything else, including an Arabic army. I can see Rome being the one that leads that way. And of course, when it says that they're a dwelling place, they've turned basically the house of Judah into a dwelling or a den or a temple. It's actually speaking more of a temple of what? Dragons? Well, that's not too far hard or too hard to believe. All you need to do is to take a look at what goes on inside of Rome. And let's just look at that real quick. Dragons and Vatican. I have photographed many of these myself there. And of course, all you have to do is start clicking on them and you can see everywhere in the Vatican are these dragons. As you can see right here, they are all over the place there. I, and probably, in fact, most of all of these I've actually photographed when I did a tour at the Vatican. Uh, and I was really surprised that there were so many. And let me blow this up just so you can see this image a little bit better. Um, uh, very surprised myself to see that the, the images of so many dragons are inside the Catholic Church. So they have made it a den of dragons. They have turned a, their worship into a place of dragons. So one, it fits the biblical narrative. And secondly, uh, I find it very interesting in that. And also when you get into Jeremiah chapter 10 here, it also talks about how that they, they sell the, 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 the son and the daughter, uh, or a boy is sold, sold out. They, they cast lots for the boy and for the daughter. And I think that has a lot to do with also with Daniel chapter 11 because that daughter is given up. I'll go into that a little bit later. In fact, if you want to check it out over there on Danoon Institute, our YouTube channel there, I'll put a link in the description below for you. 
you can kind of see where we talk about Jeremiah 10 and what it actually stands for. I'm going to be getting into this a little bit later there, but I'm about wore out, got a bad cold, fighting all that, can't hardly hear out of my ears, etc., all that kind of good stuff. Anyway, thank you for watching. Pray for us. We'll be praying for you. Don't forget, we do have a U.S. address for those of you that like to write to us here. Danoon Institute at 8297 Champions Gate Boulevard, number 442, Champions Gate, Florida, 33896. That's actually a post office box, but it's, not, it's at a UPS store there. We were just trying to make it a little bit easier for those of you that like to write to us here in the United States without having to send it overseas. Uh, our address in Prague, Czech Republic still remains. Uh, that's actually at a post office to make it easier because we're always moving around, so we had to make it a little bit simpler for us to be able to have a location where we can pick up mail a little bit easier. Thank you, God bless you, and thank you for watching. I'm Stephen Benu with Israeli News Live. Shalom.